Welcome back to Physics with Miyoshi. Uh, we're going to talk about um, Newton's laws in non equilibrium settings, and those are also um, known as dynamic type things. Um, anyway, I just want to go, the, the only real thing that's new is that uh, non equilibrium sim simply means that we're accelerating. So that means that our sum of all our forces, and, uh, the vector quantity, is uh, equal to our mass times acceleration in the vector quantity. Or, if we look at it in 3, 2D, uh, all our x components of our forces um, is going to sum up to all our uh, equal to the mass times all our uh, acceleration. The same thing with our y. Uh, all our y forces added up will give us our mass times acceleration y direction. And if we were doing 3D, we would go to uh, the z direction as well. All those forces would add up to mass times acceleration in the z direction. So here's a quick problem. Um, we have a frictionless slope and we have a mass of 8 kilograms on that frictionless slope. It's connected with a uh, through a pulley and a uh, frictionless and massless pulley and a frictionless rope to a second mass that is 22 kilograms. Now we're going to assume that the, uh, well, when we solve the problem we're going to assume that this guy falls and not this guy falling that way mostly because this is 22 kil kilograms and because that uh, slope isn't big enough. If it was a vertical slope, we could think that, I mean, if it was vertical, then we would think that it would pull down, so we're going to assume that it goes this direction. And that's probably a pretty good assumption. Uh, when we do this problem, we're going to make two free body diagrams, one for this guy and one for this guy. When we do this free body diagram, we're going to do, uh, we're going to adjust our axes so that we're parallel to the motion and perpendicular to the motion, and then we can draw our weight as a, para, a perpendicular and parallel component as well. So, when we draw the free body diagram for mass 1, we can see that the uh, only uh, forces acting on are our tension force, our normal force from the surface itself, and then the weight acting straight down. Uh, I did put in this little f is 0, that would be for our friction force, noting that this guy is frictionless, which doesn't happen, or at least not too close to, we can get close to frictionless, but not quite frictionless. Uh, here on Earth, um, but I put that in there because there are times when we're going to do some friction stuff later. Um, as we look here at the free body diagram, we can break up our weight, our force of weight, into our perpendicular and parallel components. We can see that the uh, perpendicular component, we're remembering our definition of cosine, is uh, our force of weight, 1, times our cosine of 30 degrees in this case, which is our angle, our parallel component, is force of weight 1 times our sine of 30 degrees and we can see that our weight itself is mass 1 times g which we know from um, all of our previous dealings. Now when we rearrange this or when we look at this guy we can see that we don't really care about the y component because it's not accelerating in this direction. So uh, in our y direction or our y prime direction for this free body diagram we can see that for mass 1 we can see that the normal force minus the perpendicular force is going to be zero. We don't really care because it's not accelerating in that direction. So, we're done with that part. Uh, we don't really have to do any calculations. We don't have to calculate cosine or anything like that. Then what we look at is the y x direction. And when we calculate the x direction, we can see that the sum of our forces is our tension. Well, let's back up here. Tension uh, minus our parallel force is going to be mass 1 is time like acceleration in the x direction. The x direction being for mass 1. Um, now again what we're going to do is plug in the well, we'll just make this guy uh, the parallel, we'll put those guys in there for the, the substitute that down here. So we have tension minus the force of weight times the sine of 30 is equal to our mass 1 times the ax. Okay? Uh, then what we're going to do is, that's about as far as we can go right now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the free dot body diagram for the uh, mass that's falling, mass 2. We can see from this diagram that there's only two forces acting on it. The force of weight straight down and the tension pulling straight up. Again, since it is a, um, since it is a massless rope, we can assume that all the, well we, we know from the problem that a massless rope means that all the tension goes all the way from each the eye and we know that their tension is equal. So, um, we have our sum of our forces is our weight force minus our tension is going to be 
mass two times the acceleration in the y direction. Now again, I'm assuming it's falling down, so we're going to call it down. Um, we're going to assume that down, actually I think I did that. We're going to do it this way. This would be our positive. Positive y because we're assuming that it's going down and this would be our negative y. I know it sounds odd, but we're going to do it that way. And then, um, knowing that our frictionless rope means that these two bodies act as one, then we can say that the acceleration in the a direction, or x direction for the first mass is equal to the acceleration in the, in the y direction of our second mass. And now we can just say that uh, we can just put a in there for ax and ay. And so we have the mass 2 times gravity minus the tension is equal to the mass 2 times the acceleration. Or, rearrange that, we can get tension is mass 2 times g minus mass 2 times a. Now, we don't know a and we don't know t. Oops, I did that backwards. We don't know t and we don't know a. Those are the things we're trying to find. But we do have two equations and two unknowns. So we have this equation here where we know all these guys. We know the tension. We don't know the tension. We don't know the mass or the acceleration. And over here, we don't know the tension. We don't know the acceleration. So what I'm going to do is, what I did, is I took this equation here, substituted that t, that goes into there, and then I have this equation. So I have m2g minus m2a minus the force of weight, 1 times the sine of 30 degrees is mass 1 times acceleration. I rearrange, uh, rearrange that equation a bit. Um, so I have all the accelerations on one side, so I'll bring that acceleration over, so it's an addition on this side. Uh, bring out the A and the A distri distributed property and do A is M1 plus A times M1 plus M2. And then on this side I have M2G minus M1G times sine 30 degrees. Um, and then we rearrange that to find A, and we see that that's this big line equation, I plug in all the numbers and I get the acceleration is 5.88 meters per second squared. Now once I do find that guy, I can plug that back into this equation or this equation, either one, and then I'll find my T, and I find out that T is 86.24 newtons. So, when I'm all, when all is said and done, I end up finding out that my acceleration is 5.88 meters per second squared, and that will be going down. Uh, if this number had ended up being negative, we would know that it was going up or to the left over here. And then my tension, the tension is both the same on that guy as it is on this guy. And that tension is 86.24 Newtons. So, a lot of um, algebra here, including using two equations and two unknowns. Um, but this is solving a little bit of uh, Newton's laws and using them in non-equilibrium type situations. Uh, lots of fun. These are lots of fun equations or problems where we have uh, surfaces and pulleys and, and masses and at least I have fun. Hopefully you do too. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Physics with Miyoshi.